But yeah, I used to drink a lot of beer. Loved it. But yeah, the hangovers were just too much for me. But you were chasing your dream. I am a brewery co-owner and uh, we, we make beer for uh, six or seven years. That's so yeah, that's many. Fun. I can't teach a lesson if I have a hangover. <laughs> you should separate uh, liquid from the um, hard... Uh, Parts of grains. I was yes. just drinking it without knowing all this stuff, you know. Russia, we have a very strong uh, vodka lobby. I was the only girl there and they looked at me like, honey, are you lost? Mm. Popular definition of uh, brewing is the, mm, it's science and arts. And what would you say is the biggest difference between like this craft beer culture in Russia and let's say craft beer culture in other countries? Should cry. Sexist, sexist. <laughs> I right, drink so, responsibly. So yeah, and yeah, it's an alcohol. It turns into alcohol at the end, right? Hello, hello. Welcome to another episode of the Big Apple School podcast, where the goal of this show is to help you improve your English listening skills. Today, we have a special format. We have a wonderful new guest here on the show, and we're here to bring several different experts from different industries to bring an interesting discussion to our listeners. Today, we have Andre. He's from, he's a brewer, and he works here in Novosibirsk, and he has a a um a company, a brewing company here in Novosibirsk, and we're going to be speaking about that. So welcome, Andre. And we also have Ur. Welcome back, Ur and Katya. I'm sure you're familiar with those two. So welcome, Better guys. Be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, we have a lot of episodes which you can listen to. So you could hear all of us in many different ways. So welcome. Um, so Andre, I believe yeah. you've been learning English and How's that going? Yeah. Uh, hello. Uh, uh, I'm uh, worried a little bit, so... <clears throat> It's okay, man. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, it's right. Don't worry. So, uh, like if I should uh, say anything, yeah. uh, let me know. Um, yeah. Should I... Uh, yeah, just tell me about... Yeah, just tell me about yourself, where you're from, um, and what you do. Uh, I'm from Russia. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm... Um, uh, Uh, grew up, grew up uh, in mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm, in a uh, not in a big city mm -hmm. in a in a s small in a countryside on oh, the countryside okay. and uh, moved uh, in Novosibirsk only uh, when I um, finished sc at school. Was this in the Novosibirsk region? Novosibirsk. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah in yeah. Novosibirsk region, it's uh, the 200 kilometers from oh, cool. from Novosibirsk. Oh, cool. So. I next to my house there's like this um um pivnushka. It's like a beer <laughs> shop. It's called Study Tokuchin. Is are you from Study Tokuchin? Uh, Or is that a different, completely different uh, place? I, uh, it's uh, like Tokuchin. Yeah, yeah, it's like Tokuchin, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a uh, the place called uh, Suzum. Yeah. It's uh near um Altai region. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. So before we move on, I think we need to point out that Andrew is not just a brewer because he started as a home brewer, but over time, the usual hobby just turned into a lifelong business. business. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So and now, as far as I know, you have your own production. Uh, yeah. Uh, I should say I should say that I mm, have a education uh, in the engineering industry. I graduated from oh, right. from uh, Novosibirsk State University of Architecture and Civil Engineering as a um, um, engineer specialist, and I uh, the first uh, three or four years uh, after that I uh, work in um, engineering company, and uh, have had a lot of uh, uh, long time business trips, oh. uh, like. Uh, mm, Sochi, Sochi, we mm, cons constructed uh, Olympic objects and uh, oh, cool. so like Ol Olympic, Olympic stadiums, stadiums and Olympic uh, park, um, st stadium and uh, the most uh, the biggest object of uh, 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 Sochi Olymp Olympiad. Yeah, the Olympics. Olymp yeah, yeah. Olympics. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, um, in Russian. It's called uh, GMT. Uh, 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 the main media center. 
Okay. It's a huge, uh, huge building uh, um, uh, for 500 on 500 meters mm -hmm. uh, in uh, yeah. square. Yeah, huge facility. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's uh, a lot of uh, pavilions, rooms. It's so you're basically kind of like an engineer with some architect. Uh, no, uh, our uh, our company and uh, I uh, um, make only uh, engineering systems like heating, yeah. air conditioning, ventilation, cool. and so on. HVAC, all right. Hawak. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Uh, and uh, after that, I have uh, uh, half of, uh, half of year uh, in Saint Petersburg. We uh, built. Uh, the uh, Targova Center. Shopping so, Center, so, so, shopping yeah. center right. Yeah. And, uh, and there I uh, meet with uh, craft beer. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, 2014. And uh, in Russian, uh, in, the, in this year, uh, uh, craft beer revolution uh, yep. uh, was started. Oh, I remember was this started. time. Uh, and... Uh, a lot of new breweries uh, uh, start, started up uh, in this time. A lot of new beers and so on. Uh, very unusual beers. And uh, I mm, fell in love uh, with, uh, with this idea, with this uh, uh, mm -hmm. culture. And I uh, started to divide in this. And uh, I think that... I thought that uh, brew uh, my Brewing, own yeah. my my own beer uh, at home. It's a great <laughs> idea. Yeah, and uh, I started. And I, I think before we kind of like we need to hold our horses a little bit because I am ready to listen to that for like mm -hmm. two hours. Yeah, mm -hmm. but let's just first take a short break and very quickly tell about our new promos and new. Projects well, let's do some housekeeping. Fun. So, thank you very much for transitioning. Because <laughs> I feel that. like it's I feel like we have to say to our listeners about that, and then we'll get right mm -hmm. back into brewing. We have a lot of juicy material coming we have up. A lot of juicy material on this show. But of course, you can find our show, our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Yandex Podcasts on VK, and you can check out the video version on YouTube, so you can see us in our beautiful <laughs> uniforms. And <laughs> well, now that and we have a video, I actually have to, you know. Do the hair and everything, so. Exactly. Also, guys, check out our special new mini podcast, which is called English Idioms in 30 Seconds. And you can find this on Apple Podcasts. And like it says in the title, it's 30 seconds long. So you can um, listen to English, improve your, idiom, your knowledge of idioms whilst you're brushing your teeth or, or doing whatever you're doing in your daily routine. So definitely check that out really useful material for you. Also, if you want to practice your speaking skills, we have online speaking clubs, which Katya and I have conducted this week. So how did it go, Katya? For oh, you? it was so great. We had a live stream about food. Oh, nice. So and it was so captivating. You know, I got to see some of our listeners, some of our, you know, followers and everything. And I think it should be pointed out that it's absolutely free. So, you know, you can join us. Talk to us. And Benjamin, what was the topic that you spoke about? I spoke about how to improve your language skills. And it was a great conversation. We had, yeah, we had some active speakers. And I want to say thank you to everyone who participated in that conversation. And you can find more details on our Telegram channel or on our website, www.bigappleschool.com. And I know that sometimes, you know, we have people from different time zones. And if you don't miss the speaking club, don't worry. Because there is an audio version in our Telegram chat, private Telegram chat. So I guess you can find that useful, you know, just check it out as well. Join yes, us. Yes, private Telegram chat. So it's really useful. You can get access to the after show portion of the podcast. And you can also get access to a vocabulary list of all the words that we say in the podcast episodes. And talk to us. And of course, you can talk to us. If you love us, especially. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say thank you very much to all those who've participated in the chat. So, Valeri, thank you very much for your kind words. and Oh, Mr. yeah, Zia. it was the kind words saying that Benjamin is the best host. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> well, and also we have a few new followers. We have Anna Abanina. I think that's how you pronounce it. So thank you very much for subscribing for three months. And we have 
I believe it's pronounced I get him or I get him. So welcome and thank you for subscribing. Now back to the conversation. Back to the conversation. With Andre. But don't think that we'll let you just speak about brewing just yet because we have tricky questions first. Okay. Tell us about your English. Where did you learn it? How sure. did you how did you get to this level that you have right uh, now? I think that I mm, uh, uh, went uh, standard path in English, um, uh, standard in Russia. I uh, l- learned English uh, from the first class, uh, but I uh, after school I didn't know anything. In English. It's a usual story, <laughs> yeah. 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 Unfortunately, it, it, uh, ten years of uh, English studying and nothing in in my head. Uh, so uh, it uh, continued in university at university, uh, but after uh, university graduating, I realized that uh, I need English, and I uh, um, I started. Uh, to study English uh, with Spain in in different schools <laughs> and uh, with different uh, teachers and so on. So I I paid uh, for for uh, learning English instead of uh, learn English at school and university. Oh, it's very common. But I mean, think about it this way. Sometimes it's just difficult to teach everyone at school, you know, because there are so many people and just one teacher and very often this teacher is just so exhausted and they don't need anything. Yeah, and w- when you uh, study at school and at university, you uh, you, you have uh, one goal, uh, finish it. Exactly. Uh, and for the exams, you study for the exams. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For yeah. yeah. exam mm. machine. It's only for, for marks and and for, mm-hmm. for diploma and so on. Yeah, like we said on previous podcasts, um, the, the problem, it's uh, difficult. The problem at schools. that at schools uh, and at universities, uh, teachers uh, don't explain why I should learn English. Mm-hmm. Uh, or or non, uh, not English uh, exactly, but uh, any other language. Foreign language. I mean, let's get real here. I try to explain to teenagers why they need English and they're like, Google Translate, we have it. <laughs> Three years upon graduation, I got messages like, mm-hmm. I now understand why you were saying us why we need English. <laughs> I told you so. So yeah, when you're a teen, you know, when you're a student, I think no matter how many times you get told like, oh, you need English, you're like... Well, as I've oh, said right. before, that well, I work with some teenagers sometimes, and the teenagers who speak really good English are the ones who play video games in English because mm-hmm. they understand why they need English because they're playing all these video games. Everyone and, has their own reason and their own motivation. Yeah, and they want, and these video gamers want to understand what people in America are saying, and they naturally just immerse themselves. They dive into the language, and and they feel like they have to learn it. Whereas a lot of other teenagers are there because, oh, I have to do this. And I don't blame them. It must be a really boring experience if you don't know why you need mm-hmm. to do it. It's just fair enough. someone fair saying enough. words. And you need a self-motivation for that. You just set an extent, aim for yeah. yourself. And yeah, yeah. yeah you, do whatever exactly. You, want you do yeah. need a lot. Andrew, what, do you use English like in your daily life right now? Like in your business, in your life? Uh, and what for? Uh, before... Uh, before COVID time, uh, oh, sweet we uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, business contacts with uh, European uh, mm. partners, but uh, uh, after COVID uh, started, uh, all these uh, uh, relations um, uh, f- fade. Mm-hmm. Uh, of fate, yeah, faded right? away. Yeah, faded away. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so. Uh, n- now I use English uh, uh, only w- when I mm, read uh, literature, uh, uh, magazines, mm-hmm. or uh, f- for magazines uh, related to uh, brewing industry. Yeah. I don't know about brewing industry, but I know about some other industries like medical care and so on, that all the newest things always appear in English first before they are yeah. ever translated yeah. into Russian. Is yeah. that the same right. thing? Yeah, 
it's uh, is the same because uh, <clears throat> uh, the last twenty uh, years. Uh, the most progressive country uh, in brewing industry uh, is USA. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, they have a cult of beer uh, over there. Yeah, it's uh, the biggest brewing industry in the world. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, the uh, almost all innovations in uh, in brewing uh, comes uh, come from from there. Mm -hmm. Cool. So I guess you read a lot of, um, well, like you said, a lot of literature related to brewing. So I guess you know, like a lot of English words about brewing. Maybe that's like uh, a specific words. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess like technical words. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, like um, uh, word, uh, word. It's a uh, mm, uh, mm, sweet liquid. Yeah. Uh, from the grain. Yeah, yeah. Uh, words, exactly. Uh, yeah. Hops, uh, malt, Hops, yeah. malt, yeah, uh, and so These on. These two are the only ones yeah. I know, mm -hmm. so that's my limit. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Well, you've told us how you got into brewing, how you got interested in that. So can you give us more detail how you started to develop it? Because you said that 2014. Uh, yeah, I I started uh, brew beer at home. Uh, just, just for yourself, like a little of hobby. Course, uh, f for for myself and for my friends, because uh, all vol volume of beer, uh, I um, uh, ca can't uh, drink. <laughs> <It's dangerous. laughs> if I may <laughs> ask, so the thing is that I don't know. I love beer as as a customer, you know, like, but I have no idea how it is how it is made. Because you know, when I think about brewing, I think about this huge systems, mm -hmm. you know, something like that. But brewing at home. What do you need? I mean, do you need some sort of uh, machine? You need a home kit I, for that, right? I, 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 uh, right. Uh, I try to explain it in um, some words. Uh, all you need is a big kettle. Mm -hmm. uh, big kettle and ingredients. Uh, you mm, mill the grain, mm -hmm. uh, then steep in the kettle uh, mm -hmm. in hot water uh, with proper temperature. Then you should uh, separate liquid from... Uh, evaporate it, evaporate the, uh, the no, gas. no, no, no. You mm. should separate uh, liquid from the mm, hard uh, parts of grains. Yeah, okay, ah. all right, all right. Uh, okay. Then you should boil this liquid with hops and uh -huh. uh, um, cool it mm -hmm. and uh, add uh, yeast. Oh, add yeast. And yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeast. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, you should. Uh, uh, leave it for uh, two or three weeks, mm -hmm. and voila! Voila! You, okay. you, <laughs> and after that, you, you bottle you, them you, up. You get a beer. Okay, yeah. you got a beer. I feel like okay. this. Oh, you just leave it for two or three weeks. It, it, it has it, its it, own it, catch. It, it sounds very uh, simple, but, but uh, I have yeah. a feeling it, it like has, it has a, lo a lot of uh, nuances. nuances, right? The variables um, you have to be careful uh, yeah, with, and yeah. uh, you can. Mm, mm, Spoil. You can spoil. Yeah, you 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 can spoil uh, your batch. Uh, mm. your your batch uh, mm. at every moment mm -hmm. of this. So mm -hmm. you would have to have like certain temperatures, certain material, like cause Of course, you, you should uh, have a thermometer, a oh areometer for, uh, to mm, the areometer. It's a uh, glass. Uh, boom, 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 boom. Uh, glass equipment uh, mm -hmm. to uh, okay. taste it. No, no, uh, to emerge gravity. Oh my goodness! Uh, gravity, How are you doing all of that at home? You know, <laughs> gravity. It's one of the uh, most uh, important characteristic of beer uh, because you merge uh, starting gravity and. Uh, uh, finished gravity and uh, from these char characteristics you can um, can see alcohol volume so it's uh, so I can see how your engineering so background works <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well. Gra gravity yeah. uh, show uh, how much uh, sugar in your liquid and yeah it's an alcohol it turns into alcohol at the end right uh, you should uh, 
in the start huh. of, of process of uh, mm, fermentation. Fermentation. Uh, you uh, you have uh, starting uh, gravity, mm -hmm. original gravity, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, uh, yeast uh, start to uh, eat sugars mm -hmm. from the world and uh, produce alcohol and uh, CO2. Okay. Uh, so uh, after uh, after they eat all of sugar, uh, you have finished gravity. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, from mm, finished gravity and uh, original gravity, you can uh, shit type. count. Okay, okay. calculate. Calculate. Calculate uh, alcohol volume. Okay. You know, that's, it sounds like... That's the science, you know. It really is science. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just drinking it without knowing all this stuff, you know. See, so. now you can appreciate it more yeah. <laughs> every uh, time you buy a six-pack. Uh, <laughs> very uh, so, very okay. popular, popular definition of uh, brewing is the, mm, it's science and art. Yeah. Mi 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 mix of uh, mix science of and art. Yeah. Take that. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. I'm just thinking. How did people discover beer? What was the? I mean, yeah. How did it happen? Like you know, in back in history. So somebody's it? like, oh, you know what? Like, Let's party. That's, but we need to find something first. Then I mean, started. I sometimes <laughs> ask this question about all the things. Like, how did people have this idea? that they can do this with this and get something, like back in history. Accidentally, well, maybe. I know wine yeah. has been around. There is a uh, theory uh, that uh, the first step was when uh, uh, ancient people uh, leave some grains uh, under the rain mm -hmm. and uh, it's, uh, mm, it's uh, started to uh, f ferment, ferment mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, they... Uh, got some of uh, simple beer mm -hmm. yeah. and, they try and after, uh, that. after after that uh, moment uh, this process uh, uh, started to modificate to evolve yeah. yeah oh my god you know because when you when we think about like alcohol we don't understand how much is put into it you know because let's say oh we just drink beer like okay nice But when I start thinking about it, I'm like, oh my God, it's so much easier to make moonshine at home, you know, <laughs> than beer. <laughs> so cool. But what were difficulties when you started the process, when you started to develop? Well, your did you make your own kettle for, for brewing beer? Did you make your own kettle or did you buy a kettle? Uh, yeah, I, I, buy, I bought uh, a big kettle uh, for 40 uh, liters. Oh, okay. So it's like mm -hmm. especially for making beer. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Uh, it's a uh, kettle uh, was with uh, false bottom to uh, mm -hmm. filtrate uh, the wort mm -hmm. to s separate from yeah, yeah. Uh, hard parts. Uh, so uh, you should have also mm, fermentation mm -hmm. vessels. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like a plastic bag, uh, plastic. Uh, Bucket, not buckets, but um, actually buckets. Bar barrels, yeah, yeah barrels. Uh, it, it's like a just a buckets, yeah, with uh, hydro. Mm, I, uh, actually, ah, uh, airlocks, mm -hmm. airlocks. Mm -hmm. uh, that's actually all. What you need to, to start, and it is but, it? but 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 uh, when you uh, continue to uh, to make beer at home. Uh, you uh, you continue to buy different equipments, ingredients, and uh, at one moment you realize that your home uh, not there's enough. not enough space. For that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, a lot of uh, bags with uh, with mold uh, in uh, uh, refrigerator, uh, packets with hubs, yeasts, and so on. And uh, uh, of course, a lot of uh, completed beers in, so in, 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 in bottles. <laughs> yeah. For adults. Yeah, yeah, you can just drink the house as it's whole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, ha I have a question actually. Is, um, so, you know, if you make vodka improperly, it can be dangerous. Is it the same with beer? Or beer is not dangerous if you make a mistake? It just tastes bad. It depends, bad. Uh, uh, depends of. Uh, Amount of beers. 
Mm-hmm. 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 Oh, so. do you, well, I mean, because like there have been rumors that people go blind. blind. You know, you know, blind. Oh, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Like if you drink bad vodka. Uh, uh, in, uh, in in this point, uh, beers is more safety. Yeah, it's much safer uh, than that. drinking. Y- vodka. You you can get a headache, but that's the mm-hmm. worst. Yeah. 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 So mm-hmm. cool. So. Um, yeah. How how would you? What would you suggest to someone who wants to start making their own beer? Is are there any specific shops they should go to? Uh, you can uh, you can buy uh, beers uh, legally mm-hmm. your, your home beer, uh, but uh, after I um, brewed beer uh, at home for a year or or so on, I decided to uh, to brew in uh, to brew beer in commercial brewery mm-hmm. and i uh, saw a vacancy uh, on uh, f- from one of brewery uh, and i uh, decided to uh, leave my uh, engineering career mm-hmm. uh, to uh, to make beer in a, wow. in, in a big brewery yes. and uh, i s- Started uh, from a uh, very initial position of mm-hmm. uh, brewer helper, mm-hmm. and it was it uh, was some kind of downshifting for me because I mm, um, I I leave some in uh, in uh, money mm-hmm. and uh, the brewery uh, uh, lo- uh, located uh, in Akadem Gardok mm-hmm. and I shoot. Uh, uh, move for the every every day oh you had to go like Commute. from the city yeah like every yeah. single yeah, yeah, oh yeah. god yeah but you were chasing your dream <laughs> yeah it's yeah worth it. and uh, uh after uh yeah uh yeah more uh some guys which uh, opened uh, craft beer magazine in Novosibirsk called uh, Yohoho. They uh, offer me to uh, open uh, our own brewery, and of course I I agreed with this offering. Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Was it so, scary though? Oh. Was it scary to go from like working for another brewery to start, start your, your own, own business? Uh, yeah. Actually, no. I. You were ready. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was ready for this because it was a step forward, uh, and uh, I agreed. And for uh, from 2016, we, mm, uh, I am a brewery co-owner, and uh, we we make beer for uh, six or seven years. So that's so great. Cool. That's great. Yeah. So 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 cool. It's a really fun industry. I've got a friend who's. Do you, do you know Fuller's in London? Like yeah, London? of course. Yeah, of course. of course. Yeah, my friend's dad. He was the master brewer at Fuller's, and it was just. It, and he showed me around. Uh, not not the Fuller's brewery, but he he worked at a different brewery, and it looked like such a fun mm-hmm. job. And I can totally understand why you you love that industry. Yeah, it's, it's like a whole lifestyle to it as well of course in this industry a lot of uh, routine but uh, it uh, is there is in uh, any industries mm-hmm. uh, in any fields uh, so but uh, uh, what I like in this industry it's uh, you can uh, ask advices from uh, other brewer and uh, there is no place for uh, mm, for secrets. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, no. It's, it's kind a of transparent process. Everyone knows everything about how to, how to make the beer, right? Uh, oh, of course, uh, th- uh, there are people who uh, uh, save the secrets. For recipes. Uh, uh-huh. But uh, th- the most of them are open for conversation, for uh, that's cool. So basically you see other brewers not as like competition or something or your enemies, but more as a community. colleagues, mm-hmm. community, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, mm, 
difficult situation. Uh, uh, on one on one side, uh, yeah, it's uh, everyone uh, is open, but, but. On, on another side, uh, of course, uh, there is uh, concur- competition. 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 Uh, because uh, running, you you, you, uh, you try to uh, to make the best beer. All the most uh, interesting beer, uh-huh. all the most uh, high beer. So uh, it's uh, there is place for competition, of course. I have, high, I beer. Have, <laughs> <laughs> high beer. High beer. Uh-huh. I have a question about competition, actually. How? So because now I feel like there is a boom, and from mm-hmm. basically, I remember from 2000. Well, I remember it from like 2015 that the, suddenly there was a boom in breweries and everything, and it was suddenly such a big thing. What is it like to compete with all this? Because I feel like there are so, so, so many breweries or pubs or whatever in Novosibirsk right now. I was about to ask that how many breweries in, in Novosibirsk in total? Must be a lot. Hmm? Must be a lot. Though. Mm-hmm. Hmm? How, many how many breweries do we in, have here in Novosibirsk? In Novosibirsk? In Novosibirsk? Uh, I think uh, 20. So yeah, oh. that's so but, many. Yeah. But, uh, but that's just uh, in the uh, city. A, a, a yeah. lot, a lot of these breweries uh, make uh, very base, simple beers, mm. uh, like uh, Taguchinsky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Benjamin yeah. is well familiar with the assortment <laughs> of this pivnushka. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, several breweries like uh, our, and uh, I, I can say it, uh, Goosey Brewery mm-hmm. from. Uh, uh, Academ, uh, actually, where I uh, started to <laughs> to work in this industry, yes, mm-hmm. uh, Gucci, and m- maybe some else. Uh, we make more interesting uh, beer, more mm-hmm. uh, uh, called craft beer, actually, mm-hmm. uh, and we try to experiment with ingredients, with styles, and uh, like a fusion. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, if we uh, uh, if we give uh, beers from uh, f- from uh, every brewer uh, every brewery in Novosibirsk, uh, only mm, our of or from Gusi Brewery beer uh, will be what do you say? No, we'll stand yeah. out. The, yeah, we'll stand yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, another beers uh, will be very similar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a question. So um, your brewery, so you make brew, uh, beers for Yohoho. Yeah, of course. Is this the only place where you guys sell it or no. do you also supply other places? No, we, we supply uh, in uh, bars, restaurants and some, uh, some shops, beer mm-hmm. shops. Yeah. Because I was always wondering, like, what it's like. Because, again, you never know, you never think about, you know, the other side of this business. <laughs> again, we usually just, you know, <laughs> buy it and buy drink it. Buy it and drink <laughs> it, yeah. Just consume it, you know, um, yeah. Without thinking, thinking much about, about it. Yeah, I, I learned <laughs> yeah. a lot today. Yeah, then also you have the whole graphic design side of the business. Like a lot of the beer companies have really cool graphic design. Right. Yeah, yeah, about all all yeah. Uh, you should... Uh, uh, Especially in craft beer, uh, the uh, d- design of uh, of your can or bottle, it's a very important thing. I have to say, I have this um, beer shop not far from me, which is called Valhalla, and they mm-hmm. sell a lot of beer. And I have to confess, very often I come in and I'm like, I have no idea what this flavor or taste is, mm. but I absolutely love Looks, the design. Mm-hmm, <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. I'm getting it. Yeah. I don't care what the taste well, is. The, so, so you know in America, well, you definitely, I'm sure you definitely know, Pabst Blue Ribbon, of course, you know, mm-hmm. the famous yeah. big beer company. Like the beer itself is not amazing, but everyone buys it because the, the can looks amazing. Mm. I mean, <laughs> and everyone. It's, it's, you know, it's like, ju- not, not judging a book by the cover, you know, but really we customers sometimes are attracted to this bright things, cute cans and everything. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I remember once I was in a shop and I was like, oh, is that a can of stout with a dog on it? I'm getting it. <laughs> Was it good? I don't remember, but I remember the dog. Yeah. I mean, I it don't know. Do, do, do you like the boring, like, American beers, like Budweiser and... 
Yeah, of course. Or did you uh, like them? Uh, of course. Uh, uh, I need to uh, to say that, uh, of course, I like uh, experimental beers. Yeah. But uh, on every day, I prefer Traditional uh, very or simple or lager. Lager. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, because it's um, very uh, complicated with food. It's uh, it's light in alcohol, mm -hmm. and you can get a couple of couple of uh, uh, cups uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, and uh, it uh, will be okay. Well, so. what what is your go to um, beer? Your your favorite like major brand beer? Uh, uh, I love uh, a brewery called. Uh, MPK, it's a Moscow Brewing Company, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, they produced a uh, beer called uh, Pilsenskaya, and it's uh, mm. my favorite German it, it, style. It, it, it's a uh, rather Czech style. Oh, Czech! Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 No. and uh, it's my favorite beer for every day. Mm -hmm. Cool. But what are the differences between Czech beers and German beers? Uh, and Polish beers as well, they have a completely different kind of flavor I from what I remember. think about Polish. It's not usually the combination that comes to mind, you know. Beer, yeah. first yeah. association like Germany, Germany Czech yeah. Republic, Poland. Well, just because they're all next to each other. But yeah, uh, also in, in England, we have a lot of Polish beer as well. Uh, uh, Polish famous for, for the meat, not for beer. Mm. Uh, and the uh, difference between uh, German and Czech beers uh, I think the uh, the most uh, noticed moment it's a uh, bitter. The uh, Czech uh, Czech beer is more more bitter than bitter German, than German. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and German is uh, more drinkable. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a slight offense you know, to Czech beer. <laughs> Sorry for Czech, <Chesia. laughs> yeah. But, uh, listeners from Czech, but I. Uh, uh, I want to notice that uh, in German uh, there are a lot of styles of beer styles, and uh, they can be very uh, different. And uh, the difference between uh, a couple of beers can be uh, so big that uh, when you uh, will be drink one of them, you. Mm, can't uh, say that it's this beer from German. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, Vi Vice beer. What did well, you like? Vice beer. Uh, the one of the most unusual German beers, uh, beer styles, is uh, Goze. It's a uh, sour and salty beers. I think I've tried these like before. They're, they're, yeah, yeah. they're surprisingly yeah. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we, we we make this beer and. Uh, in the sum in summer season, it's very mm, very popular, popular. position. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool. It's completely different. Yeah, the taste, taste. is like yeah. yeah, sour, salty. Yeah, sounds interesting, really. <laughs> and what would you say is the biggest difference between like this craft beer culture in Russia and let's say craft beer culture in other countries? Or are we basically uh, the same in terms of it? It's a global movement, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, there is difference, and uh, the most uh, mm, not interesting, but uh, the most noticeable thing that uh, a lot of con uh, craft beer consumers uh, located uh, in Moscow. Uh, actually, it's a uh, half of uh, craft beer market in Russia. Then uh, I can see why, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, then a uh, quarter uh, part uh, of market Saint is Lee. Saint Petersburg, and another quarter it's uh, uh, the rest of Russia. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, so, it's kind of uh, yeah. In the regions, uh, craft beer uh, consumers is very countable. It's uh, very. Mm, Restricted, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, uh, to develop your craft, craft uh, brewery, you should uh, mm, should uh, 
uh, sell your beers in Moscow or St. Petersburg. Uh-huh. So uh, if you will be say, sell uh, your beers only in your home region, it will be very, very local. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess another good market is university students. Yeah. Well, at least in England, like brewers like to hang around university um, areas because of course they like to drink ju- yeah. generally. I mean, I don't know, but I think in Russia it's not the case because the thing is that students is... They go to university to study. Oh, please, <laughs> dude, Whereas come in England, on. They go it's, to, it's, to more, it's more about the income. <laughs> the students don't have money for good beer as a rule. Yeah. They buy whatever's cheaper. Whereas, you know, in other countries, students, well, they can afford buying good beer. So that's the difference. In Russia, you know, if I remember student years, nobody ever would buy anything, you know, worthy because there is no money. Other than what, Zhigulyovskaya? Well, yeah, on a good day. Yeah. You know, (laughs) but that's just it. I think that in Russia now, it's more about past student time, like people who are most consumers. But uh, even if we uh, say about uh, not only students, but uh, not uh, a lot of uh, people who can uh, con- c- can buy uh, craft beer because uh, usually these beers is uh, pretty expensive. Mm-hmm. So, so much more expensive yeah, than the usual yeah. one, yeah. But it's worth it. <sighs> and what would you say are the what? What are the things that really sells beer? Is it is so? It's the marketing, or how how do you market a beer? Is it just via logos and TV? Well, how how do you market beers? Mm, uh, as usual, it's uh, social media. It's uh, uh, personal contact with uh, mm, bars uh, owners and so on, and uh, of course we have a. Uh, mm, Sell manager uh, who uh, uh, call uh, to uh, distributors, to shop, beer shops, to bars, and so on. So it's uh, in Russia uh, uh, channels of uh, marketing for alcohol products is very um, limited. Yeah, it's restricted because mm-hmm. you can't advertise yeah, on you, TV. You, you can place. Uh, um, uh, banners and so mm-hmm. on uh, on mm-hmm. the streets you can uh, translate uh, your your products on tv so yeah. tasting it's, it's not, tasting events are allowed yeah yeah, is, yeah. is it allowed right well i mean like a sampling test yeah but not right? on the street not on the street okay. not on the street uh, uh, like uh, you can organize an uh, event hmm. uh, in uh, in bar for mm-hmm. example uh, with uh, free degustation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, tasting, yeah, yeah tasting, yeah, tasting, yeah, yeah. Tasting. I kind of remember, was that like a beer fest by Gusi this summer or something like that? I remember there was some sort of event that a lot of people went to. Well, to beer. I'm not sure, but I know in England, well, I used to live nearby a place oh, that had well, a beer festival. One of very popular um, marketing channel is uh, beer festivals. Yes. Yeah. Right in 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 the U.S. So I was living in Massachusetts, and there are a hell of a lot of breweries over there. And the thing is that a lot of them had free tours with free tasting. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no way, no way. They're like absolutely free. You just leave a donation. Like it could be as much as you want to. Some people left a couple of dollars. Some people left like ten dollars. But yeah, they would give you a tour around, show you things, and then you would have these four samples of different beers. You know. And I love this format, you know, in general of these tastings. You could go to any yeah, brewery. Like the whiskey distilleries in Scotland yes. as well. Yeah, if you go to Scotland, you have to go mm-hmm. to the whiskey distilleries. They're amazing. And in general, I love the system, you know, of uh, different pubs and uh, places, let's say, in, in the U.S. where you can have this tasting set. Like, let's say, four, five, six different types of beer, of cider or something just to try. Because in our case, I don't think we have that in many places, you know, that you can come and order a tasting set. So, because I would love it, you know, just like before I make a decision. Although in some places you're just like, I don't know. And they're like, do you want to try? I'm like, yeah, please. And they just pour you a little bit. And you're like, yeah, let's, let's do this one or another one. 
Another thing I was going to mention in England, we have this organization called CAMRA, which oh, stands yeah. for, oh, you know CAMRA, yeah, yeah Campaign yeah, for campaign Real for, for Ills. Exactly, yeah. So, do, Cam- so yeah, yeah, do you, want, do you want to talk about that a bit? Do you have a similar organization in Russia? Yeah, we have uh, some, some unions uh, in, in Russia, uh, and uh, our brewery consists in uh, National Union. Of uh, beer and uh, mm, drinks producers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. And uh, but unfortunately, in Russia, these uh, organizations don't have uh, enough of uh, influence, mm-hmm. like in England, for example, because uh, our our state is very mm, strict. Mm-hmm. And yeah. uh, mm-hmm. w- very uh, vertical oriented. Yeah. So uh, a lot of uh, a lot of new uh, laws and so on. Uh, they are mm, uh, signed by president and so on uh, without. Uh, uh, without market uh, comments. So. Well, also in England, we have pub culture and pubs are such an important part of the UK culture. And I guess they have, they lobby the government mm-hmm. in, in the UK. Whereas in Russia, yeah, you have bars, but it's not the same uh, kind of culture. In, in Russia, we have a very strong uh, vodka lobby. Yeah. But uh, mm, brewing industry, unfortunately, is... Uh, not very influenced. And is it, tell me, is it true that beer only until recently was considered an alcoholic drink in Russia? I believe before beer was not really considered to be like a, an alcoholic drink. Uh, so, so now, now I, I believe now people are looking at beer more like a, an alcoholic drink. But before people thought beer, oh, it's like Coca-Cola. <laughs> you can just drink it. Yeah, uh, in the uh, Soviet Union, uh, the beer uh, wasn't alcohol, actually. Yeah. And and in the early of uh, 20th century, uh, uh, light beer uh, can uh, can be uh, consumed by child. Yeah, yeah. But b- b- children. I thought I thought I was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there was, there was uh, beer, uh, dark beer with uh, uh, 1.5 percent of alcohol, alcohol. W- very oh. light. Mm. Yeah. Uh, light, sweet, and uh, it was uh, like cola or kvass. Yeah. For K- kvass. Wow. Yeah. I, I love it how Benjamin knows very random things about Russia's history. You know that sometimes you're like what. Well, it's, it's you know a lot of Russians know a lot about British history that I don't even know about. It's it just fair enough. It depends which culture yeah, you're fascinated with. Uh, uh, yeah, the last uh, the last uh, fifteen years, uh, um, every alcohol in Russia regulated uh, in uh, one way. Uh, it doesn't matter what uh, what is exact beers, vodka, uh, and so on. Uh, it's uh, regulated uh, in in the same way. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, and it's uh, uh, many people uh, think that it's not very uh, right because in uh, if we talk about England, uh, the uh, b- uh, beer industry in England regulated in a different way. They have. Uh, Mm. Uh, access, right? Well, like, well, well, did you say t- t- tax for oh, taxes? Yeah, yeah, taxes. T- yeah, absolutely. Taxes, yeah, yeah. Taxes for mm, uh, beer producers mm-hmm. is uh, uh, less mm-hmm. than for from producers, uh, for example, whiskey and so on. Hmm. I didn't know that. Well, I guess I don't. I don't know. Maybe because in England we have a a lot of alcoholics. And, and yeah, both England and Russia have a, a history of alcoholism. And I guess maybe the government recently has started to to tackle stronger alcoholic drinks. 
more fervently. Spirit. No, no, yeah. It's no. interesting to notice the difference in the pub culture in general, because let's say in Russia, you go to a pub, you can see all types of people over there. I remember the first time that I was in London, I wanted to go to a pub. I was the only girl there and they looked at me like, Honey, are you lost? <laughs> like, I want to have a pint of beer, please. They're like, are you sure this is the right place for you, hon? <laughs> and they were all like, you know, all men. Most of them, you know, like in the 40s, 50s. And they just looked at me like, this is not really a place for you, hon. Like, just go. <laughs> but and did you like, find a smaller pub in... It was a tiny pub you, in Highgate. You, you should cry. Six years. That was back in 2013, you know. <laughs> But yeah, but I was like, oh my God, is it really not a thing here? Like, what is it like? What is the culture like? Because in Novosibirsk, nobody cares really. Yeah. But in there, I thought, is it everywhere like that? Is it not everywhere like that? So until the end of my stay, I was like, I'm not going to a pub anymore, <laughs> ever. Well, there's so many different types of pubs, different you know, cultures of pubs. You have student pubs, you have old geezer pubs, you have pubs that builders go to there's so many different types of pubs well, unless you know then you can be in an awkward situation <laughs> <laughs> but now a pint of beer in england's so expensive especially in london i, I haven't I bought a imagine. pint in a while but i wouldn't be surprised if it was over six pounds now oh yeah really, easily easily yeah, yeah. How, how much is a average pint of beer in, oh there are so many in, in novosibirsk would you say oh uh, price? price yeah yeah what, what is the Price of beer right now, roughly so 400, like, 500. For, no, there's not no, that much. No, no, 500. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's the cheapest beer. Uh, it cost, um, I think, uh, 200. Probably. Yeah. I think it's like from 200 to like 350. I mean, average, because of course there are like more expensive beers, clearly. Yeah. So, yeah. My but uh, average price, I think, uh, 300 rubles. Yeah. Yeah, for good beer, you have like a... The one yeah, I usually one. buy is now 390 Which one's that? Um, uh, Stout. In, okay. But local, Moscow Moscow Brewery Stout. I don't remember the name though. Bell, Bellhaven, I think. Bellhaven Stout. And you said you prefer lighter beers, like... Lager. Like lighter color beers. Or do you also like the porters and the stouts? Mm, it depends on the uh, situation. Uh, if you... Uh, want uh, to spend a um, calm time uh, at home, uh, you can uh, drink uh, one portion of stout for uh, the whole evening. But uh, sometimes I like uh, to drink a light, light, uh, light beer with uh, different foods. Mm -hmm. And I prefer... <coughs> And which beer gives the worst hangover? Asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hangover? Hang oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, it's a... Uh, can, can be, of course. But which which one has the worst? Is it... Do porters give the... Does a port, uh, porter yeah, give yeah, the yeah, worst yeah. hangover? A stout or vice beer or... Which beer is the worst for hangovers? I think you can't say uh, anything like... Actually, it uh, depends only uh, the volume. De it depends on uh, alcohol volume and uh, amount of beers, and that's all. Uh, because uh, alcohol is alcohol, and uh, doesn't matter what you drink: uh, beer, uh, light beer, dark beer, or vodka. I mean, there are so many other aspects, you know, your personal like health and everything, how you react to alcohol, your mood, whether uh, you've had any food what kind of food have you had mm -hmm. you know because i get such but uh, such bad uh, hangover so uh, i had to stop i should uh, i should say that uh, if uh, brewer uh, brewer uh, make a mistake in uh, during fermentation of beer and uh, fermentation temperature uh, was uh, uh, too high uh, it uh, it can be uh, the finished beer can be very um, like intoxicated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It contains uh, um, uh, high weight uh, spirits, mm -hmm. and uh, they can make. Can go. I have a question to you, Benjamin, because Benjamin says that he's having like horrible hangovers. Do you always buy beer in that pivnushka next to your building? Maybe you just go. No, to no. I've tried so many beers. Like, sure? okay. yeah, the last time. 
I, I had to stop drinking because, yeah, I can't <laughs> continue. It's just your I personal had, body, you know, like it's just, reaction. It's just me, like, yeah, because yeah. I love the taste of beer. So maybe, yeah, there, there are things like that, yeah. But I also like drinking fast as well because it has like almost no alcohol. And but yeah, I used to drink a lot of beer, loved it. But yeah, the hangovers were just too much for me. Interesting. That, that I can't teach a lesson if I have a hangover. For it. <laughs> Clearly. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I have to stop. But but um, are, are you blessed with having no hangovers or do you get rotten hangovers as well? Oh, well, you know, I... I... I know myself, I know how to drink. So let's say I know that if I have lots of like sweets or something, it's going to be bad. But, you know, I follow the rule, like have your food with mm. it. And usually the pub that I go to, oh, they they know people. So, you know, after like two or three pints, they're like, have some water, dear. I'm like, <laughs> thank you. What about you? Or do you get bad hangovers? If I drink a lot, I, I have. But yeah, as, as she said, I need to eat something before I that, drink so. responsibly. Oh, yeah, responsibly. But I get yeah. hangovers yeah. even if I have like one or two beers. And it's, yeah, I think it's just my body. I don't know. God uh, bless to, you. To, yeah. <laughs> you poor soul. So I don't get drunk, but I just get hangovers. To prevent hangover, yeah. you can uh, drink uh, uh, water. Uh-huh. Do I drink loads of water, yeah. yeah. You, you, can, you can mix uh, uh, beer and water and it was uh, more comfortable mm-hmm. in the morning yeah, yeah. no what, i drink but i actually drink a lot of water and I, so this it's is just, just it's just yeah. me yeah it's just, it's just your me. reaction but in brazil they have these tablets which are not legal in the european union interesting they're called, beginning they're called ngov they're called and you take a tablet before you go out mm-hmm. and drink and then you take a tablet after you it's alka-seltzer it's not alka-seltzer but um it's, it has like a lot of magnesium and some other ingredients and you just don't have a hangover. So nothing illegal, basically. I, I mean, in the ingredients. I'm not, no, no, it's not cocaine or anything like that. Just, just making it's, sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not, it's not um, approved for use okay. in the EU. So okay, maybe it's not good for you. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> in, in Vietnam, they serve the beer with ice. For preventing the hangover. Oh, yeah, oh it's, it's really blasphemy. A, yes, it's a mixture oh, of no. beer and water. And mm-hmm. it's, it, yeah, it aims to stop the hangover the next day. But yeah, it's... It also yeah. stops it the t- joy. Yeah, it, it tastes horrible, you know. It, it, it was not Where's good. the joy in that? And in Greece, I don't know um, if you've... No, well, have you noticed in Greece how they serve the... The ouzo. Not the ouzo. Uh-huh. Oh, God, that's horrible. Ouzo is horrible. Roku is better but, in <laughs> Turkey, yeah. But the, um, the glasses, they freeze the glasses exactly. and then they serve, serve the, the beer. beer in there. Yeah, and it's the same in Turkey. That's oh, they do in Turkey chilled, too. Chilled glass yeah. and after that you can pour your beer and yeah. enjoy. That's that's cool. That's all right. Well, guys, right. We, we would love to continue this discussion into our after show segment. So definitely stick by for that. Join the private chat if you wish and yeah, ask us questions. Also, if you have any comments you want to ask us, please let us know in the comment section. And like I said earlier, check out our website, which is www.bigappleschool.com. So we'll see you in the after show segment. So see ya.